Today we're going to be creating this shape in DaVinci Resolve, and we're going to use it to make an animation that looks something like this. The shape is called a parallelogram. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two sets of parallel sides, like that. Um, I got a message a few days ago about creating a parallelogram in Fusion, so I thought I'd do it. And I set it up and I have a plugin and effect that makes it really easy to do. You just drop it on the timeline and start customizing. I'm going to show you how to add the parallelogram to the timeline, how you can use it to create some animations, and then we're going to jump into Fusion and I'm going to show you how I set it up, a um, few, few tricks and some simple expressions, and that's all you need. To get the parallelogram plugin, you can go to sparkeffectstudio.com and download my SparkFX app. Um, inside of there, click effects, and then there's a place where you can see all the effects that I have that I have. I'm going to be adding a lot more into this area. Area. Um, find the parallelogram and you can download it um, and feel free to explore the app and check out some of the other things that are in there. A complete feature walkthrough for SparkFX is coming really soon. So if you're interested, be sure to check that out. So see all the great stuff you can do with it. All right, let's take a look at how to use the parallelogram. Let's take a look at how to use the parallelogram plugin. In Resolve, click effects and open up the toolbox. And then you're going to open up the generators. The parallelogram is a generator and click on SparkFX elements. And you'll see we have this parallelogram here. All you got to do is take it and drag it to the timeline and stretch that out. Let's take a look at what some of the options are. In the inspector, let's go ahead and open that up. You can move it around with the position. You can adjust the width and height. And then this is the uh, horizontal shift. So you can kind of shift it this way and that way. And then there's also a vertical shift. So if you want to do it the other way, you can shift it that way as well. A couple different options here. And then there's this top offset, which kind of lets you throw in some different stuff here. It just kind of mixes it up just a little bit kind of do some crazy, crazy fun stuff right there. You can kind of go and reset all this stuff and you hit make square. It's going to turn it into a square. Just kind of reset it for you. And there's also this set angle function where you can kind of choose the angle that you want and set it so you can kind of get an exact, kind of exact offset if you want right there. And then down here we have some adjustment things. You can adjust the size, the level, and kind of blend it in. Soft edge, you can make it, um, you can invert it. We can make it a border only like that. And once you do that, then you can do this position and length. We can kind of mess around with these a little bit. A um, few other options, and then down here we have the color. And those are the basic options. We'll go ahead and reset it. Okay, that's the parallelogram plugin. And in addition to this, I'm also working on a uh, an arrow. Uh, I kind of call it the ultimate arrow because you can take it and bend it and move it into all kinds of really interesting shapes, very customizable. And it's going to use the same techniques that I'm going to show you um, once we get into Fusion and the expressions and how we can take some of these shapes and use some formulas and expressions to customize them and move things around exactly where you want. Let's take a look at how to create this animation. And as with just about everything in Fusion, there's a lot of different ways to do this. Some are probably more simple and some are a lot more complex, um, but this is just one way. And by learn learning these techniques, you can not only use it to create this, but you can use it to do um, lots of other things as well. Now that we have the shape set up, let's uh, use this and see if we can create an interesting animation. So let's, uh, we've got some images here. Go to the, I went to the media pool and go to images. I'm just going to put one of these in the timeline here and stretch it out. So we're going to use the parallelogram as kind of a mask to only show this image where the parallelogram is. I'm going to do this with the blending modes that are built into the inspector on the timeline. So it's going to take this flower clip and let's bring it up a bit, kind of at fill. And we're going to go to the blending mode, the composite mode on this one, and we're going to set it to foreground. What this allows us to do is choose something to apply an operation to the foreground image. So we're going to um, go to the parallelogram, which is underneath it, and we're going to go to settings. And in the composite mode, all you need to do is choose alpha. And what this means is it's going to use the alpha transparency from the parallelogram or whatever image is below it and apply that to the foreground image. So now as we adjust our parallelogram, you'll see that we're making adjustments to the flowers. So let's make a shape right about like that. And we're going to slide it over and put it, put it right in here. Let's take these red leaves and put them right up here. And this is going to be above everything. We're going to take our parallel parallelogram and we're going to hit alt and we're going to drag it up and we're going to set the leaves layer to the same thing. We're going to set this to foreground and we're going to take our parallelogram right below here. And we're just going to move it a little bit and let's do a couple more. Bring this down. We got some trees here. Copy the parallelogram up right underneath there. And on the trees, we're going to set this to foreground or the composite mode there and move the parallelogram again. And we're going to do one more. Um, we'll take these kind of autumn fall leaves right on top, move the parallelogram up and set the composite mode on the trees. And we'll shift this over a bit, make some adjustments. 
That's not too bad, you get the idea. Okay, now that we have this set up, let's animate it. We're just gonna use some simple animations to have these um, little parallel, parallel, parallelograms slide on in. All we need to do is apply an animation effect to the parallelogram, and you'll see that it's gonna be shifting. Right in there, actually, it looks like we need to make the leaves a little bit bigger. So let's take that and we're gonna scale it up. There's lots of different ways to do the animation. I'm working on something, but also Jake Whip has his editor, editor's collection with Whip Animate, and obviously there's Mr. Alex Tech. All these are really great solutions. So let's, uh, we're gonna use Jake's tool for this one. Um, we're gonna open up effects and go to editor collection and we're gonna take whip animate and we're just gonna drop this on each of the parallelograms. Let's put it on this bottom one down here, the very bottom layer and go to effects and we're just gonna do position, enable that. And you'll see that we have the, the flower sliding over there and make it a little bit bigger. Slide the thing in there. Um, obviously you can make adjust this however you want. We can, also make, we can also make this interesting by moving and shifting things around. So let's, uh, we're gonna take the, each of these just kind of a real quick effect. Um, go to the parallelogram, we can adjust the width. There we go, let's make, the, make them a little taller. All right, so just some interesting things we can do with it. Um, obviously a lot of different ways you can play around with it and use something for this effect. And also the way that the masking does with the foreground and alpha composite modes so it gives you a lot of flexibility to mask things out and create some really interesting effects on the timeline. All right, let's jump into Fusion. I'm gonna show you just a few basics of how this um, uh, parallelogram and the arrow is set up and how I'm using expressions to be able to easily adjust these shapes. Fusion time, hope you guys are enjoying this video. Um, this is not gonna take too long. We're just gonna show you the basics of how the expressions work and a few little things of how um, I was able to create this effect. All right, let's go to effects and we're gonna take a fusion composition and drag it into the timeline and get into fusion. All right, so in fusion, we're just gonna use a polygon node to set this up real simply. So I'm gonna take a background and put it in back here. It will be a black background. Put another background in, we're gonna set this one to red and we're gonna add a polygon mask onto this. And with the polygon selected, just click four points and that's the basic shape. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna merge this right on top of our background. We need to get control of the points and to, so we can specify exactly the position of the points. To do this, we're gonna highlight all the points in the viewer, we're gonna right click, go down to polyline and choose publish and we're gonna publish the points. And that's gonna take each of these points and put it down here so that we can control it precisely with the XY coordinates. I'm gonna start by setting these points to kind of a relative position so you can kind of see how this works. So anything that's close to 0.25, I'm gonna set it to 0.25. Anything that's close to 0.75, we're gonna set it to 0.75. I'm gonna do, this, I'm gonna do this for the rest. So this is just getting these positions in roughly the same position. So you can see this bottom point right down here, this is point, point, um, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is in the middle. So anything to the left is gonna be less than 0.5 and anything, if 0.5 is the center X position, this one is, 0.25 less than the middle, and this one is 0.25 greater than the middle. So we're gonna use that when we build our expression. So right click on the polygon and choose edit controls. We're gonna create a real quick control here called width. This is gonna be the width of the polygon. It's a number and the range is gonna go from zero to one and we're gonna set it to be a slider control and hit okay. And what that did is that created this little user tab here with a width control. And we're gonna set it to 0.5. Yeah, let's set it to 0.5. Um, so the, the width is gonna be 0.5 by default. So let's go to the polygon and hit controls. And we're gonna set an expression for 0.0. So I'm gonna right click and choose expression. It's a, a point type with an X and Y coordinates. So we could uh, change it here. We could make it 0.45 if we wanted to. And you'll see that that moved it in closer to the center. So what we're gonna do, um, I'm gonna open up a, note, a text editor here to make it a little easier to see. And we're gonna take this point and copy it into here. So 0.5 is the center. So we're gonna set this to 0.5. We're not gonna worry about the Y position right now. So we're gonna say it's the position of this point right here. Actually, let me do this real quick. If you highlight these and you right click and go to polyline, you can choose point numbers and you'll see that there's a zero, one, they're kind of small, two, three. So this zero is 0 0.0 right here, just so you can get a reference. For We're doing the expression for 0 0.0. So we're gonna do 0.5 minus width divided by two. And we're gonna take this expression, we're gonna copy it, and we're gonna paste it into here. So it's gonna be the center minus the width. So as, as we adjust the width, you'll see that that point is moving. And we're gonna do this point one, and you're gonna see it's actually the opposite formula. It's gonna be plus, because we're gonna be going in the opposite direction. So let's uh, do an expression for point one, and paste that in here. When we go to the width, you'll see that it, it gets bigger and smaller. So when, the, so when the width is zero, both of these points are at 0.5, and as they get bigger, it stretches out. So basically, that, that's what I did to create the parallelogram with the expressions. 
I just added expressions for the rest of these for the X and Y positions. And then I added another uh, modifier on here, which is a shift um, that it actually takes these points and shifts them to the left or right um, based on the value of another control. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments, questions or anything, just uh, leave them below. I'd really like to hear from you. And remember, you can get this by downloading my Spark Effects app and going to the effects area. There's a lot of different effects in there, including the parallelogram effect. Um, download it, play around with it, and let me know what you think.